Greetings everyone, in today's video we will show you how to create a mission filling shader graph using Unity 2020. In this shader graph we will use a mission texture and we will use a filling percentage to fill the game object with a mission. Then you can use that controller or parameter to make animations by animating the value of filling percentage using uh, the animator or maybe using coding. Without any delays, let's get started. So let's get started by bringing the models to Unity project. Of course, your designer should have brought you or provided you with some models uh, and also with the textures required to do uh, some emissions. So in addition to the normal textures that usually provided with any game object, an emission texture should be look something like this. Yeah, it should be the white areas represents the glow areas while the black areas no emission. The white represent one in shader graph while the black represents zero. So once you got the model ready and your texture ready, we can uh, go ahead and start building our shader. But before we get started, just make sure you have uh, initiated or crea created your Unity project using the Universal Rendering Pipeline template in order to get the post-processing effects enabled. So now let's create our shader graph. Right click, create shader, Universal Render Pipeline and lit shader graph. Let's name it, open that, let's, okay. The first thing to do, the shader surface is transparent because we want to show the glow only in the white areas of the texture we received. Uh, let's add a new property, texture 2D, and we will use some 2D sample texture, sample texture 2D to sample that texture link the texture to the texture on sample texture 2D then link to the emission now click on the emission texture and set it to the texture you received from your artist we can save the scene go to scene go to our model the model will have uh, a material on it so we will add another material above it to show the glow so let's create a new material let's name it pyramid test then we can apply to it the emission fill shader now we can add the second material above the te te uh, the original material the pyramid test here pyramid test okay and as you can see, now the emission texture covered the whole game object. But to make it transparent, I think we forgot to enable some properties on the shader. So let's go back to the shader. Enable alpha clip. I made a mistake. I should have linked the texture, not to the emission, to the alpha. Because we want to clip the emission using the texture we received so sorry for that let's link to the alpha and delete from emission cool now we can see the emission area on the game object let me show you by deleting the new material we added delete see it's gone controls it it's back again no now we will make this area glow we can start from the position node which represents the position of each vertice on the game object but we we don't need that based on the world position we, we need that based on the game object itself so if we ret rotate the pyramid we're still getting the filling into the direction of the game object not to the world then we need two floats first float is to calculate what is the height of our game object because it's different from game object to game object then we will create a code for that which feed our shader what is the height of our game object to determine the correct filling percentage so let's set a new float object height also we need another float 
to determine the fill percentage. So let's name it fill. And we can make it uh, a slider between 0 and 1. And it's always better we set the filling for now to 0 0.5 so we can see half of the game object filled and the other half is not. Then we multiply the height of the game object with the fill percentage we want. Then we can add an offset point, which is a float. We add that to determine where we can start the filling because because some game object when we receive them from our modeler their origin might not be the zero the, the bottom of the game object so in that case you might need to offset the origin point or the start point of the filling so we add that to the results of multiplying the object height with the filling using an add, add node So we access the, the position of each vertices on the game object. We want to access, split the position to get the Y axis. We get the green channel, which represents the Y axis. We access the Y axis. Then we subtract from it the fill point. Then we clamp the results between 0 and 1. To clamp the value between 0 and 1, we simply can use clamp node and set the minimum to 0 and maximum to 1. But there is also a better way, which is using saturate node. Saturate. It's a clamp node with a default values between 0 and 1. We want to give the uh, emission a color, so we create a color node. Let's name it emission color. And we use a lerp node to lerp between darkness, which is zero, and the current color based on the filling we got. Then we link everything to the emission on our fragment se uh, section. Let's save and see where we got, but uh, first we need to make sure that the color we selected is HDR to give some glow. Let's save and go to the scene, to the pyramid test. The current emission color is black. Let's give something a blue mm -hmm. and increase the intensity to have some glow. Five, okay for now. If you can't see glow at this point, make sure you have enabled the post-processing on your camera and also have post-processing volume which contains the bloom effect. So make sure the bloom eff effect has been enabled or added and the threshold and in intensity has been set to one. By the way, I'm using Unity 2020. We can control the field between one and zero, but we don't know the correct height of the game object. You can experiment with that by just checking how it gets filled, or I'll show you a better way how to determine the uh, height of the game object automatically. Uh, but as you can see, that's why I created the offset point. If we are at zero filling, there's still some points which are filled. So we can drop the offset point to remove that completely. So we maybe 0. Point seems minus 1 is good. See, this is the benefit of the offset point. OK, so then I created uh, a script that auto calculate the mesh height of the current game object. So you need the following variables. You need an access to the mesh. A float which we will store in it the object height, a material, and the index for material. Because since we have two materials, we want to set the value for the second second material which contains our shader graph. Uh, on start function, we get access to or a reference to our mesh filter. Also, we get access to our material 
using the index. In our case, it's index one, since the first material index is zero. And simply, we grab the height by accessing mesh.bounds.size.y. Y represents the height of the game object. Then we set this float automatically on play by accessing the material dot set flow object height variable just make sure that this name is, is exactly as in the shader graph so let's copy this and on our shader on the object height paste this reference here save the shader graph and close the script I'll close the intro for now click play we will automatically get the height of our game object so with the same technique you can apply this to any other models i have two other models a cube and nearly a sphere which i created two new materials for them and ap applied the same technique for them let's check the cube everything is the same i just changed the color it, it auto detected uh, the height and all, I also changed the offset point so when we are in zero we can't see anything if, if it's one we might see something you can check the intro scene here by going to the timeline so for the intro scene I created three virtual cameras okay this is camera one which shows the pyramid in the center then we go to virtual camera 2, then we go to virtual camera 3, then we back to first uh, camera. Yeah, to do that, you can check my tutorials about how to create cutscenes using Cinemachine. I just gave here a brief explanation and you can find the link for creating cutscenes using Cinemachine down in the description. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching and looking forward to see this technique in your video games. If you found this useful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the notification bell so you keep updated with my new videos. And of course a huge thanks to our supporters on Patreon who keep supporting us despite the fact I didn't release much content recently, but I promise to do my best to be more careful and uh, more active in the near future. Thanks for watching and till next time, see you soon.